So the next thing that we're going to be talking about in the general topic of matrices is something called determinants and then using these determinants to solve systems of equations using something called Cramer's rule. So we've done a lot of different things at this point to solve systems of equations. We, saw, we started out by just using a table and then by graphing. Then we reviewed the elimination method and the substitution method, and now we are coming to our last method of the chapter, which, like I said, is called Cramer's Rule. So in order to use Cramer's Rule, we have to introduce something called determinants. And determinants are basically just a formula to get a single number out of a matrix. So I'll kind of walk you through here. So a second order determinant comes from a two by two matrix. So these are the examples that we're gonna be seeing here, are the two by two matrices. And so to get the determinant of a two by two matrix, so we're gonna call this A, B, C, and D. So the determinant itself, for some reason what they do is they put the A, B, C, D, if you put it inside of two parallel lines, that means that you represent the determinant. And so what you do in order to get the determinant is you just take this nice formula, you multiply A times D and then subtract B times C. So if you think about it, what you're doing is you're multiplying down the diagonal and then subtracting the upwards diagonal. So it's basically just like a cross multiply and subtract sort of formula. So let's try it real quick with these next two. So like I said, these two parallel lines means you're taking a determinant. So we cross multiply top down and we get a negative 48 and then minus, and then we cross multiply bottom up. 10 times negative seven is a negative 70. So remember, anytime you have minus a negative, it changes to plus a positive. So we've got a negative 48 and a positive 70, which gives us a positive 22. So the value of this determinant is 22. Let's practice one more time with this one. Again, you cross multiply top to bottom. Seven times negative four is a negative 28, and then minus, then you cross multiply bottom to top, so 9 times 5 is 45, and we subtract these. Keep in mind these are both negative, so negative combined with another negative will give you an even larger negative number, so that gives us a negative 73. So pretty quick and easy, just a very brief little formula when we're doing 2 by 2s. Uh, when we do 3 by 3s, we get to have a little bit of fun here. So third order determinants, we do something called the diagonal rule, which I will walk you through here. So say we've got... Um, if we get a determinant with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, so all of a sudden there are a lot more letters when we are dealing with the uh, three by three determinants. So the first thing that we do when we're solving these is we rewrite the first two columns outside of the determinant. So we're going to rewrite the A, D, G column as well as the B, E, H columns. That's the first step, is you always rewrite the first two columns outside, just like we did there. And then you're going to draw diagonals. So we start with the upper left-hand element, which is A. So we're going to draw, draw diagonals going down, and you multiply the elements in each diagonal. So we multiply a diagonal down this way, and so we get A times E times I, which keep in mind, just like these two examples, they'll be numbers, but I'm just writing it kind of in generic notation here. And then we multiply down this diagonal, so we get B times F times G, whatever that turns out to be. And then we multiply down the last diagonal, which is C times D times H. So now notice here, every single one of those values got covered, like the D, the G, and the H got hit as well, which is why we copied the values outside here. So we have three different products that we're multiplying together. So then we repeat the process, uh, starting with the bottom left and we kind of work our way up. All right, so I'm gonna use a different color for that just to get a nice visual. So let me use green. So then we multiply up the diagonals. So here we get G times E times C. Multiply up this diagonal, we get H times F times A. And then the last one, I times D times B. So don't worry, I mean, there's a lot of letters there. Don't worry too much about what the letters mean. But when we're getting the determinant, what we do is we find the sum of all the products in the bottom. So we add all these together. We add them, we add them, it's wonderful. So these ones stay positive. The ones along the bottom we add. And then whatever we came up with along the top, we actually end up subtracting those values. 
So then you combine these all up. We do this plus this plus this minus this minus this minus this. So really, it's not all that different from what we did up here. We multiplied from the top down. We got AD. We kept that product positive, And then we multiplied from the bottom up, and we made that product negative. It's exactly what we're doing down here, just in a much, much larger scale. So let's try one. So like I said, the very first thing that we do is we are going to copy the first three kind of off to the side. I'm actually going to rewrite the entire thing just so I can work with some bigger values here. That font is just so darn small. I want to rewrite it here. So that represents the 3 by 3 determinant. The very first step, like I talked about, is to copy down the first two columns off to the right. Okay, so that's your first step every single time when we're dealing with the three by threes. Okay, next step is we multiply down this diagonal. So negative five times negative one is a positive five times two gives me ten. Then I multiply down this diagonal. So it helps like you can multiply them in different orders, of course, if you want. So five times negative four, that's an easy one. We can do that first. So five times negative four is negative twenty and then times positive 9 gives me a negative 180. And then down the last diagonal, 4 times negative 2, that's a negative 8, and then times 6 gives me a negative 48. So those are the ones that I am leaving. So now, just to clarify, I just add these together the way they are. It doesn't mean I make them positive. The red ones keep their sign. When we do the green ones, we're going to end up subtracting them. So negative 4 times negative 1 times positive 4, Negative times a negative times a positive we know comes out positive. 4 times 1 times 4 gives me 16. Okay, then this one. 6 times 5 times negative 5. So 6 times 5 is 30. Times negative 5 gives me a negative 150. And then 2 times negative 2 times 9. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then times 9 gives me a negative 36. So those are just the products after I multiply all the diagonals. So then what I do is I have my 10, my negative 180, my negative 48. I'm just going to line them all up down here. And then my 16, my negative 150, and my negative 36. So pay attention to the signs here. So all the red ones, I keep their signs. I just add all these red elements together. And then the green elements, I subtract. So I'm going to subtract 16. I'm going to subtract a negative 150, which, remember, turns into plus a positive. And then I'm going to subtract a negative 36, which, again, turns into plus a positive. So, of course, definitely break out the calculator to do this beautiful string of numbers. So I think just from the last video, I might have to hold this up. So we've got a positive 10 plus a negative 180 plus a negative 48. And then minus 16 plus 150 plus 36. You could also write out minus a negative. You'd get the answer either way. And then hit enter. I get a negative 48. So that negative 48, that's my answer. That's the determinant. So there it is. Okay, I believe I've got another one of these just so we can practice one more time. I do. Okay, so again, I'm going to rewrite it just so you guys can look at some bigger font instead of that teeny little font. Okay, so we're representing the determinant. The very, very first step is to rewrite the first two columns over on the right-hand side. Okay, and then I start multiplying. So the red ones, I multiply from the top down. So negative 8 times negative 5, that's 40, and then of course times 1, and it's still 40. Multiply down here, negative 4 times negative 8, that's a positive 32, and then times 3 gives me 96. 4 times 0 times 4, oh, the 0. Let's talk about the 0 for a second. Anytime that your diagonal crosses through a 0, it's an automatic 0. No matter what other numbers you have there, how big, how small, negative, positive, whatever, if I do 4 times 0, that's automatically times 0, and then times 4, still zero. So zeros are our favorite numbers to come across when we're doing these. So now let's multiply up. So three times negative five, that's a negative 15, and then times four gives me a negative 60. Up this one, four times negative eight is a negative 32, and then times eight, 
Let me just check that. So negative 32, I'm sorry, times a negative 8 is 256. And my last one, oh, there's the zero again. It's wonderful. It doesn't matter what other numbers I have there. I'm going to get a zero. All right, so I've got my red numbers, 40 and 96, oops, and zero. And then I've got my green numbers, negative 60, positive 256, and zero. So again, with my operations, I add the red numbers together the ones that I got down along the bottom, and then I subtract my green numbers. And this minus a negative changes to plus a positive. So let's add these together. So I've got 40 plus 96 plus 0. I don't really need to type that if I don't want to. Plus 60, change from minus a negative, minus 256, and then same thing with the minus 0. You don't really have to type that if you don't want. So hit Enter, and I get a negative 60. So negative 60 is the value for this determinant. Okay, so now we're going to use these determinants to actually come up with something. So the determinants can be used to find areas of a triangle. Um, so this is going to be a really good single problem to do all together. So skip over this. I mean, make yourself a note if you want. This problem right here we are going to do together in class. So I will come back to that. Um, we're going to jump right into Kramer's rule so you know how to do that. So Kramer's rule. Our system of equations, we've got ax plus by equals m, cx plus dy equals n. So c, we've got multiple matrices here. Now let's talk about the, the coefficient matrix, exactly what that means. So if c is the coefficient matrix, what that means is that we're just going to pull the coefficients right off the x, and the y in both of these things right here. So in my coefficient matrix, I get an A, and a B, and a C, and a D. All right, so that is my coefficient matrix. The solution of this system, here's what I get. I get two things right here. I have my x value, my x value. I get this new determinant, which I'm going to write in here. This new determinant is m with n. So that first column is m and n, and the second column is b and d. So that's a new determinant. I'm going to explain what that means in just a second. And then over the determinant of c, keep in mind here that those lines here do not represent the absolute value. They represent the determinant, just to keep in mind. And then y equals, we've got this other new matrix. We've got a and c in the first column, and then m and n in the second column, and then over the determinant of c. So like I said, now I'm going to explain exactly where these come from. So this coefficient matrix that we talked about, let's see with the coefficient matrix. So again, coefficients are just numbers that are attached to variables. So for the coefficient matrix, I literally just pull off the a, the b, the c, and the d that were once attached to the y. For these other two determinants, the determinant that I have right here and the determinant that I have right here, for the x, what I've done is I replaced x's coefficients, the a and c, with m and n. So instead of this one, I replace the a and c with these numbers on the other side, m and n. So these determinants are almost the same. The second column is the same, but I replaced the x column with m and n. And then I actually did the opposite here with y. These ones are very similar. The left column is the same, but what I did is I replaced my y column, y's coefficients, with m and n. All right, so we'll discuss exactly how this works as we look through our first example. All right, so flip over. So we've got this first system right here. So first we're going to come up with our coefficient matrix. So we literally are just going to pull the coefficients right off. So 7, 3, negative 5, and then negative 7. So I'm going to do some new notation here. So c sub x. This is going to be the one where you replace x's coefficients with these numbers. So we replace x's coefficients with the constants. So that's where the 37 and the negative 41 come from. And then we leave the other column in place. Okay, and then c sub y, we're going to replace the y column with these constants. So you leave the 7 and the negative 5 exactly the way they are and then replace these with 37 and negative 41. All right, so let's get our determinants here. So the determinant of C, 
Let's go back up here. So I cross multiply these two together. So 7 times negative 7 is a negative 49. And then minus, remember it's always a minus, because then I cross multiply these two and I get a negative 15. So a negative 49 minus a negative 15, that gives me a negative 34. Okay, so that is the coefficient matrix determinant. So now this, so here's my negative 34, the determinant of C sub x. Okay, so let's go back up here. So this equals, probably should have left myself a little more space, 37 times negative 7. Let's break out the calculator really quick. 37 times negative 7, I get negative 259. And then remember it is minus, and then I do the other multiplication. 3 times negative 41, that one's not so bad. That is a negative 123. So remember the minus a negative changes to plus a positive. So let's calculate that. So a negative 249 plus a 123. That gives me negative 136. So that's this coefficient, negative 136. All right, and then the last one, the determinant for c sub y. So I cross multiply these two together. So 7 times negative 41. That gives me, little calculator work, 7 times negative 41. Gives me a negative 287. And then minus, because again, it's always a minus for this next diagonal, negative 5 times 37. Little calculator work again. Negative 185. So change the minus negatives to plus positives, and then when I combine those up, I get a negative 102. All right, so those are my three values there. That's really the work is, is figuring out what those values are. And then what I do is I combine them up. So for my x value, I take the determinant of c sub x and divide it by the determinant of c. So that is a negative 136 divided by a negative 34. Now remember your calculator, we've talked about how you have to push that control enter key if you want to get a decimal, but if all we want is a reduced fraction, we could plug that right into our calculator. So if we type that in, hit enter, well first of all, I guess it's not a fraction, it just comes out to be 4. So what we get there when we plug that into our calculator is 4, so that's the x value. For the y value, I put a negative 102. Oops, let me write the formula first. The determinant of cy divided by the determinant of c. So the determinant of cy is a negative 102 divided by the determinant of c, which is a 34. So let's type that in. So negative 102 divided by negative 34. That gives us a nice value of 3. So that's the y value is 3. Now remember, any time that we're dealing with a solution of a system of equations, we want to write it in an ordered pair. So the x value first, then the y value, and there we go. That is the one solution that makes both of these two equations work. Okay, so another one. So start with our coefficient matrix. So again, we're just pulling the coefficients straight off of the x and y. So then cx... That is where I replace the x column with the constants. So I replace the x column with 70 and 3, but I leave the y column the same. And then cy, I leave the x column the same, the 8 and 9, but I replace the y column with the 70 and the 3. All right, so to get my three determinants. So the determinant of c equals, so I cross multiply here, 8 times 7 is 56 and then minus, and then I cross multiply here. 9 times negative 5 is a negative 45. All right, so remember to change this to plus a positive. So what I end up with is 101. 101 for the determinant of C. Determinant of Cx. I multiply here. 70 times 7, that gives me 490. And then minus, and then I'm going to cross multiply here. 3 times negative 5, that's a negative 15. Just like the one before, remember to change this to plus a positive, and so I end up with 505 for this one. And last of the three, the determinant of c sub y equals, I cross multiply top to bottom, 8 times 3 gives me 24, and then minus, oops, and then I multiply bottom to the top, 
9 times 70, 9 times 7 is 63, so that means times 70 is 630. Alright, so this ends up equaling negative 606. Alright, so we've got some nice values right here. I'm going to combine them into the formulas that I had up above. So the x-coordinate is the determinant of cx divided by the determinant of c. So 505 divided by 101, not such bad division, that comes out to be 5. And then the y value is the determinant of cy divided by the determinant of c. Alright, so that equals negative 606 and then divided by 101. Also not so bad, that gives me a negative 6. So just like the one before, make sure you write your answer in an ordered pair. First the x value, then the y value. And again, that represents the one ordered pair that makes these two equations work. Alright. So we've got these two systems um, with three variables. So I'm going to walk you guys through how to do these on your calculator. So we can do matrices by clicking our little, remember, our alien symbol key next to the 9. So let me hold this up so we can actually see. Um, come on. There we go. Okay, so next to the 90 in the middle column, we've got a bunch of matrices. So you can select this. 3 by 3, you want to hit OK. So then I'll type in your coefficient matrix. So along this first row here, we can pull off a 3, a 5, and a 2. Those are our coefficients. So 3, hit tab, 5, hit tab, and there's 2. Next row, we can pull off a negative 4, a positive 3, and a negative 5. Whoops. Tab. Hit tab again. We can go into the last row, pull a 5, a 4, and a negative 7. Okay, so that's our matrix. The way that we get a determinant, so go on the outside here, you literally just type in D, E, T for a determinant. Come on, there we go. And then put a set of parentheses. Okay, so D, E, T, and then a set of parentheses, and it'll take the determinant of, it for, of that for us by hand. So hit enter. And the determinant is negative 330. Okay, so... C, the determinant of C is a negative 330. So now for this one, we need the determinant of something called CX, where we replace the X column with the constants over here. So let's go back up in here. So select this. And like I said, we are going to replace the X column with these coefficients right here. The negative 7, go down, the negative 19, go down, and the negative 15. Okay, clear up. Come on, there we go. Okay, so hit enter, and we get a negative 345. So that is the C sub X. The determinant of C sub Y. So remember, what we do for C sub Y is we replace the Y column with these constants. So let's go back up to the original one that we typed in. There's the original coefficient matrix. This time we want to replace the y column with the negative 7 and the negative 15. Or I'm sorry, 19. The last one is a negative 15. So this time we have replaced the y column with those coefficients. So hit enter and we get 855. And then the determinant of a new one. This one's called c sub z. With C sub Z, we replace, again, surprise, surprise, the Z column. So here's our original. Copy, paste it. Replace the Z column with the negative 7, the negative 19, and the negative 15. And then hit Enter. So that one is a negative 465. So to get X, Y, and Z, I'm going to combine these guys up. So to get x, I take the determinant of cx and divide it by the determinant of c. So that is a negative 345 divided by a negative 330. So again, plug that into your calculator. Let's see what it simplifies down to. So negative 345 divided by a negative 330. If you hit enter, it'll just give you a reduced fraction. So that reduces to 23 over 22. So that's the x value. 
the y value we put the determinant of cy over the determinant of c. So that's an 855 over negative 330. So let's type that in, see what it reduces down to. So 855 divided by negative 330 reduces down to negative 57 over 22. And my last one is the z, the determinant of cz, the new one, over the determinant of c. So this is a negative 465 divided by a negative 330. Alright, so let's type that last one in. So we've got a, is that a negative? Yes, a negative 465 divided by a negative 330. It reduces down to 31 over 22. Okay, so we write our ordered triple. We've got 23 over 22, comma, the y value, comma, the x value. So that is your ordered triple. Hopefully you notice how awful those numbers are. I'm assuming you would realize that it would be awful to do by hand. All right, so we will leave that last one to do together as well.